Whenever interest rates plummet, as they have, investors fall in love with high-yielding dividend stocks all over again. So you'd expect the Real Estate Investment Trust to catch fire here, with the benchmark 10-year Treasury supporting a pitiful 1.52% yield. The REITs tend to pay spectacular dividends, and these dividends look a lot more attractive when the bond market's giving you next to nothing. Sure enough, when you look at the 31 REITs in the S&P 500 as of late, late night, get this, they're up almost 23% for the year on average. Oh, that is some phenomenal return, 23%. But, and this is a very big but, the REIT space is not going up in unison. Not all real estate investment trusts are created equal. Some are a lot more equal than others. Something like Equinix, the fast-growing data center REIT, is up 63% for the year, while the mall-based research is down 32%. Still, most REITs have done pretty well. 25 of the 31 are up double digits, while four are roughly flat, lagging the market substantially, and two are down. And it's a pair, of course, of retail REITs. Mace Rich and Simon Property Group. Even though, by the way, Simon Property Group is incredibly well run. doesn't matter. It's the milieu. So tonight I want to show you what's working in this space and what isn't, because some of these REITs are absolutely worth owning here, as long as you understand the secular themes that have taken control of this group, and they're not just based on declining rates. That's the real strength. So let's take them sub, subsector by subsector, starting with the healthcare REITs. Now, here I'm talking about Welltower, HCP, and Ventas. On average, the healthcare reached up an astonishing 23, 29%, 20%. This is, this is the third best performing cohort. It shows you how good these cohorts are. The 29% makes them third. Why? Because these three stocks are all riding the same powerful secular trend. It's an aging population. We're approaching the point where older baby boomers are starting to move into senior living facilities, uh, something Welltower, HCP, and Ventas are happy to supply. Welltower is the best performer, and HCP is only a couple percent behind them. Still, if I had to pick just one healthcare REIT, I'd go with the biggest. I'd go with Ventas, which also owns medical office buildings, hospitals, research labs. Why? Because I think Ventas' CEO, Deb Kafaro, is one of the best in the business. Stock still has the great yield, 4.3%. It trades at a reasonable 19 times Funds from operation per share. That's, their, uh, that's the metric that people use. And you know, I'll tell you what I really, one of the things I really like about it is it's, got, it's a big cap stock. And that means uh, institutional money can still pour into it. Next, how about the lodging REITs? Now, there's only one of them in the S&P 500. It's called Host Hotels and Resorts, but it's emblematic of the group. Host Hotels has been kind of a dud. It's down very slightly for the year. Makes sense. The whole lodging industry is being disrupted right now by Airbnb and its imitators, VRBO. In short, the the secular theme here is going against the traditional hotel business. So you probably don't want to buy a REIT that owns uh, hotels. There's no real spur. All right, now, you you got better options, like, say, the industrial REITs. Oh, wow, these are incredible. Uh, There there are only two of them in the S&P, Prologis and Duke Realty, but they've been terrific performers, up an average of nearly 39%. Prologis leading the way. We've had them on. They're brilliant. Now, Prologis is a name that we've recommended many, many times. Uh, This is a REIT that owns logistics and fulfillment center properties. Basically, it's the backbone of e-commerce. Last year, Prologis made a major acquisition, snapping up DCT Industrial Trust for $8.5 billion. That was another stock that we liked very much, and it's really paid off. Now, this one's up more than 45% year to date. You see the warehouses along the interstates all over the country. What a great business. How about Duke? Well, we're less familiar with this one, candidly, but it owns industrial properties like state-of-the-art bulk warehouses and modern distribution centers, similar to Prologis. The one problem with these industrial REITs, they've run so much that their dividends have made, created some pretty paltry yields, average 2.5%. All right, how about the office REITs? Group is interesting because there are clear haves and have-nots. While the office REITs are up an average of 13%, there's a pretty wide range. Alexandria Real Estate is up 34%. Boston Properties, 14 Vernado only up 2 SL Green only up 1%. And remember, a lot of these companies, again, are really well run, but it's a secular theme. The have-nots are the traditional commercial real estate owners. Vernado and SL Green are in a tough spot because we built way too much office space in many major cities at a point at a time when uh, technology has made it easier than ever for people to work from home. That's one reason that WeWork deal imploded. And it doesn't help that WeWork has basically stepped, stopped signing new leases in a desperate effort to cut costs. That could have a ripple effect across the commercial real estate space. Not really clear how it'll happen, but you keep hearing it over and over. Boston Properties facing the same problems, but it's a more focused company with properties in just Boston, New York, Washington, D.C., San Francisco, and Los Angeles. While the stock's held up, fine. Uh, 
not here, please. So what's this Alexandria Real Estate doing differently? We've had them on. Well, they're specialized. They own office space for universities, commercial research facilities, and life sciences centers, like their beautiful complex just off the FDR Highway in New York. That's why they pulled away from the pack. Although, like the other big winners, you're getting a little bit less here, 2.6% yield. Now, you've got the residential REITs. Get this, up an average of 28%. At first, that surprised me. But it makes sense. These companies are capitalizing on the relative poverty of millennials who can't afford to buy their own homes. Even homebuilders like Taylor Morrison are getting into the build-to-rent space. There are a bunch of these residential REITs, and if I had to go pick one, I'd always go with the one I keep coming back to, Avalon Bay which focuses on a handful of major metropolitan areas with extremely tight job markets, high wages, and impossibly expensive real estate. Think New York, hey, Brooklyn, California, and the Pacific Northwest. Then there are the retail REITs all over the map, up just 8% for the year. Some big winners like Kimco and Realty Income, as well as some big losers like Simon and Research. Now, the losers, uh, well, they're straightforward. They own shopping malls, and we know that the malls die. Every time you see another retail bankruptcy, like, like that Forever 21, uh, these stocks get rocked. Forever 21, it happens to be Simon's seventh largest client. So how did Kimco manage to rally 39% for the year? How did Realty Income run up 23%? Simple. They're not mall REITs. They're shopping center REITs. People used to bet against Kimco all the time on this. The difference being that shopping centers are mostly mixed-use spaces in big population centers. A lot of them strip malls. People like that. You pick things easy to, to get in and get out. Finally, you've got a bunch of weird specialized REITs. The data center names have caught fire this year. Uh, Equinix up 63%, Digital really up 21%. The cell tower REITs, wow. I mean, unbelievable. Here it's American Tower, Crown Castle. We've had American Tower on a lot. Uh, Crown Castle, SBAC. We've had SBAC on too. They could have a lot more upside, by the way. 5G approaches. We need more, more and more bandwidth. I'm also impressed that a couple of storage REITs are up more than 20% for the year. Extra space and public storage. That's where retired baby boomers put their stuff when they retire and downsize. Bottom line, the real estate investment trusts have been roaring. And if you're looking for income, you could do a lot worse than owning some of these. However, you got to be careful to avoid the pitfalls because some of these names, like the mole owners, are total houses of pain. As for the biggest winners, they're trading more like gross stocks than REITs, which, by the way, is fine by me. Mad Money's back in the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.